Hi, it's Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Welcome to Crochet Podcast, episode 157. Super excited you're here today. Thanks so much for inviting me over. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Krista and this is The Secret Yarnery. This channel's all about everything great, everything about crochet. I have a ton of stuff to share with you today. Some finished objects, some works in progress, and then the usual newsy bits of what's going on in my life. So if any of that is of interest to you, hit that subscribe button under this video so you don't miss out on any of the fun. Now jumping right into it, news. I guess it's family first, right? So what has been going Going on Easter that was a massive success I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do hold on let me shut my door kids are also home from school so that's a thing so we did a scavenger hunt. So I divided up all the candy into equal piles and just took a photo of it and then put it into like desktop publishing software to turn it into an individualized candy scavenger hunt per person. So there was none of that teenagers, you know, pushing people out of the way to get all of the candy. It was totally equaled and awesome. So that was fabulous, loved it. Also cooked a whole bunch. We had a roast ham, mashed potatoes, gravy, which was delicious, of course, the vegetables, and a lemon meringue pie for dessert. It was so good. I did extra of... <laughs> I did extra of the lemon filling, so one and a half recipes for filling it up, because I like a really full pie. Plus I think my pie plate is a little like larger than usual. So one and a half recipes of the filling and the meringue, and boy was it so delicious. Also had it for breakfast the next day. Yum, 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 so good. Oh, also made Hasselback potatoes. If you don't know what those are, it is a potato that you slice thinly but not all the way through. So I put a couple barbecue skewers, conveniently I have a lot around for my flowers, put a couple of those on each side of the potato while I'm cutting it, and then the barbecue skewer stops the knife from going all the way to the cutting board. Super great, and a barbecue skewer is just, it's, it worked out so fantastic. So that was also part of our delicious dinner. And that also started the kids' holidays being home. So they have the month of April off, which is super great. We've been doing a lot of fun stuff, going for walks in the forest, doing some activities around the house, and really enjoying them being home. It's so nice to just be able to spend that time together. And last, before we jump in to finished objects, I'm so excited. I just wanna share a little update about my social media. I think what my problem was with it, if you don't know, or if you haven't watched for a long time, I have a love-hate relationship with social media, usually the latter. I just don't, I didn't feel it was my generation. I don't feel comfortable on it. I don't feel, I just didn't know what to do. Do you know what I mean? So, and then just coming up with like, ugh, there's so many things I need to do other than social media. Do you know what I mean? This whole year, my goal has been to tackle Instagram. I can do YouTube, I got this down, I know what to do, super comfortable. The only thing that holds me back is time. Like I need time to crochet, I need time to, you know, get things done. Other than that, like I, I'm very comfortable here. Over on Instagram, it's like, I don't know, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's, I'm just not connected to it. So this year has been my goal to have my Instagram at least somewhat reflect this great community that we have. So I have been working on it and trying to wrap my brain around what I wanna do and what I can do, like what my skill set is for being able to produce content in a vertical format, pictures, all the rest of it. So I'm very happy to say I think I've done it. I think it's pretty great. I know what to do. And I think that was what my problem was of why I didn't enjoy it and didn't like it is I thought I had to be like everybody else and be posting pictures of my food or pictures of, you know, all like just be basically vlogging my whole life on a social media platform, which isn't really my style. But I do have, I have figured out a way of vlogging my life that I can manage. 
So wherever I am that's cool and I want to share it with you, I just start with my feet. So my face isn't in it, my outfit's not in it, I could be wearing my pajamas, it's totally fine. I just do my feet and then I show you where I am. I can do it. I can totally do that. So I'm really kind of happy now that I have found something where I can share some behind the scenes stuff and not feel out of place or awkward. So if you're on Instagram, come on over, at Secret Yarnery, same as here. I'm at Secret Yarnery everywhere. And then um, check it out, give me your feedback, what you think, what do you think about it? So that's my news over there. Pretty happy about it, pretty excited about it, and finally feeling a bit comfortable. A little bit comfortable, not that comfortable, but at least not embarrassed. So that's, that's my update there. Now who's ready to see some finished objects? Very, very excited. Worked on them, where should we start? I feel like we should start with this little guy. <laughs> My Easter basket, is that not the cutest thing? So, of course, as it happens but right before the holidays, like a few days before, I get a great idea and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to do it and I have to make four of them. Like one for all the kids, right? So, I'm not a single crochet girl and I'm not, I just want it to be done. I'm also like a sturdy basket. So if you can see that one in there, oh, don't look inside, I gotta tell you about that later. Hmm? Shh, you didn't see it. <laughs> So it's really nice and thick. I used an eight millimeter crochet hook because it's pink and it matches. Four strands of yarn, so I tripled it up again, like the Scraptastic. It has the cutest bottom edge. See how flat that is? Like, so good. Like, I'm just so impressed. So super excited with how it turned out. Put a little flower on it. I did all sorts. Oh, let me show you. I took photos with my phone. So I took, all, I did all these different ways of adding something to the handles. I thought a little bow would be cute. Oh, uh, it kind of ended up looking cheap or just like crafty, I guess would be the word. I tried real ribbon, which I thought looked cute, but then if you, I tell you to do a tutorial and then you have to go and buy ribbon, it's kind of not the point. So I'm like, what about one of those cute little flowers? Yes, absolutely. So cute little flower on the basket. Always have an itchy nose when I'm filming. If I'm not filming, my nose, my nose is never itchy, it's so weird. So, that's a cute little basket, built-in handle, because I'm not gonna build another piece and stitch something on, no. We're doing it all, in, all at once. So tails in the beginning, tails at the end, four strands of yarn, and you're done. So that is super cute. If you wanted to make them for toiletries, they also hold yarn so great. Like, let me show you. Let me find two balls of yarn. You're gonna freak out. You're like, oh my gosh, I need those right now. And the best part, one of the best parts, if you have this, your two balls of yarn sitting beside you, you can center pull from both of your balls of yarn and they just sit there. It doesn't roll around, they don't tip, they don't flop to the side, they literally stay nice and stuck in this cute little basket. Adorable, right? So when I was filming it, I put both my strands of yarn in a basket and had it sitting there and I was like, that really worked like so well. So it's not yarn on the arm, but it's definitely yarn on, like a yarn beside you. <laughs> a yarn beside you basket. So that was a good one. Then I also made, of course, of course I did, the smaller version. So the big and the small. This is the exact same pattern, but two strands of yarn and a four and a half millimeter crochet hook. So smaller hook, still the same super cute sit flat bottom super cute same flower just two different sizes so same tutorial same pattern less yarn smaller hook more yarn bigger hook smaller basket bigger basket adorable these would be so cute for like cotton balls or something in your bathroom adorable so those are my baskets some of my baskets when I was filming the tutorials, I also put my hollow fiber in one of the baskets because that just sat nice beside me. So I was heaped up right to the top with hollow fiber. This is for my next finished object. Hmm? If you've seen the channel, you know what's going to come next. But this also worked for storing my hollow fiber. I made, well, no, first of all, let me tell you. Let me get myself prepared. 
there was a comment on YouTube from one of you lovely subscribers who, and if you haven't subscribed, by the way, please subscribe. It really helps out. Who said that they made my berry garland, holly berry, berry, holly, my berry garland, I'll put it up on the screen. My berry garland in Easter colors for Easter. And she had it up on her mantle, so it looked like little Easter eggs, and it was such a great idea. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm doing that right now. So I ran upstairs, grabbed some yarn, and tried to do it. So first, this is pastel cotton or co cotton pastel. Yes, my hair's on it from Ice Yarns, just it was the one of the yarns I had that had Eastery colors in it. So I did a little random egg shape, not believing that her holly berry would be like so great. Then I'm like, okay, well that's not fantastic to be honest. Did a haul, did my version of it, I didn't look at the pattern and I'm like, oh, tried to make it bigger. Oh, tried to make it bigger. Oh, tried to, anyway, all of these are attempts at making an egg garland. I think I got better at it over here, right? But what bothered me is the center doesn't come from, like the garland doesn't come right from the middle there. Can you see it kind of comes from the side? And so it looks lopsided. Like that is, you know, it's not this way. Are you getting me? And the bottom is a little bit open because it's a chain. You can't really do a magic ring in the middle of a garland. I'm like, what if we did a bigger one, like proper egg shape? Still had the open bottom part and was still lying like not straight. Like, I guess we could maybe slip stitch that or like crochet into it so it came from the top and bottom. But then I was like, what if we just made an egg? A double crochet egg, super fast, can you, is it focusing? Where is my focusy thing? Am I in focus? Let me stop and check. Okay. I hope that was in focus. Okay. So made this little egg guy. Just double crochets. And I'm like, that'd be cute. Tried to figure out how to like, you know, I left a little chain thingy at the top to like connect it. So make a bunch of eggs and then connect the eggs to make the garland. And then I was like, what if I just made eggs? What if I just made eggs for the Easter baskets? They're literally a six minute egg, six minutes, 30 seconds. They're so fast. If you're a beginner or much slower than me, you can still get so many done in an hour and they are adorable. They are so cute. I love it. So I did a whole, bu I did a whole bunch of white which I think are fantastic for like play kitchens. Like if I had grandkids, I'd be like those, or kids, I would be making these for the, for the um, play kitchen. I think they're so cute. And the colored ones, I did a whole bunch of colored ones for like the Easter, Easter theme, but you could also just do white or a whole bunch of neutral tones for like the neutral egg. I think that would make such a beautiful tablescape. Oh, for Thanksgiving or something, you know, you could always have like, you know, some sort of harvest scene. So cute, so fast, so easy, right up my alley. Plus magic ring. So the end is closed. See that? Nice and shut. So it's five rows, boom, you're done. So quick. And then you just tuck a little hollow fiber or polyester filling into it and you have your eggs. So started from a comment. Thank you for inspiring me. Ended up with farmland eggs, like a lot of them. So I'm loving it. I don't even want to put them away. I even got an egg crate and put them in an egg crate. Let me see if I can find my egg crate. So this is how eggs come in Kenya. They are 30, oops, there's 30 eggs on one of these paper trays. So I made enough to fill up my tray.
until I almost made enough to fill up my tray. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Look how cute they are in like an egg crate. Adorable. Let me get it shut. There we go. I was pinching in the wrong spot. Look at that. Wouldn't that be so cute for like a play kitchen or if like your kids came over or for counting if you like preschooler stuff. That's amazing. Like I love it. I think it's so cute and just so fast. They're so fast that it makes it worth it because I don't want to spend a lot of time. I know you can do single crochet and make like single crochet eggs where you cannot see the stuffing whatsoever. I'm okay with that. Like I'm 100% okay with that. Like it's just something fun. I love it. So that was really easy, really fast, really fun little project to do and I officially have an egg addiction. I'm not joking. <laughs> I love them. Like I'm not putting them away. Now another finished object has been sitting around the yarnery the whole time. Have you spotted it and wondered what it was? Take a minute. Do you see it? Do you know where it is? Boop, right there. It is a blanket basket. I got on a, bla a basket kick. So it's a blanket basket. Let me get it and show it to you. Ready? <laughs> I tried to get it like matching my natural decor. So, you know, that like, you know, the baskets I have around the yarnery, kind of like that. So I did it with four strands, three strands of like a neutral Kenyan acrylic kind of beigey color. Oh, I'm showing you the seam. That's my seam. I didn't even worry about like making it look fantastic. But so there, so there is the basket complete with blankets. Look how many fit inside. I wanted it to be big enough, so I kept on, like I made the, the bottom really big. Ah! It didn't seem big at the time. It felt like if I started doing the sides, I was gonna be cheating. And I was gonna end up with like a tabletop basket. And I wanted a floor basket, but I think, I got a floor basket. I'm happy with that. I didn't put handles, like I literally just wanted it for blankets. So I, this idea for this would be to have beside your sofa or like in your living room. It'd even be really great for toys, to be honest. Or like, you know, that stuff you have, you have around your house for your kids usually or yourself if it's blankets. And then you can just kind of like throw them all inside and pull one out when you get a little bit uh, chilly or if you're just trying to tidy up your living room really quick all those little toys or Lego bits Just go in cute little baskets like this all around your living room So I'm loving on it. I think it is so cute It reminds me I didn't do a thumbnail <laughs> Didn't do a thumbnail So big Basket if you want a tutorial for this let me know in the comments uh, it's pretty great. Now, I guess it's, is it a finished object? I don't think so. I think it's still a whip, a work in progress. So, if you have been, again, watching for a while, a few years to be fair, you will remember this cute blanket I worked on. It's probably like three years ago, to be honest. Look how cute that is. Isn't it great? I love the colors. I love the stitch. I love all of it. So this was on my waiting to film pile. I'm filming it. So you'll be able to make your very own and perfect for spring. It has nice little holes like a lacy kind of pattern, but not, let me open it up again. There you see it. So it's open and lacy. It's so fast. It is a one row repeat, which is one of my favorite kinds. Perfect for like hanging out with friends, you know, when they're talking, you don't have to like do a whole stitch count in your mind or remember what you're doing. Just start and finish, same across every single row. So it's great for crocheting with friends, crocheting in public, crocheting watching your favorite shows or your favorite podcast, and it works up really fast. It is great, it's amazing, and I love it. So this tutorial is coming out. I'm really excited about it, as you can tell. 
but also haven't crocheted it. Well, I crocheted it like probably three years ago. Now, mo lots of you know, I'm gonna say most of you, but lots of you are new, so you wouldn't know. But if you remember when <laughs> I was crocheting on this, let us know in the comments. I'm just guesstimating three years ago. Then I'm like, oh my gosh, what happens if you don't do a tutorial, if you don't film it at the same time, which for lots of reasons happens. Life gets in the way, more projects take over, holiday projects, like there's a whole reason why. I can't just film everything at the same time. I'm trying to get better at it, or not really get better at it, I'm trying to stop pushing myself to make so many videos that I can't keep up the filming with what I'm working on. But, three years ago I think it was. Now if I come back to film it now, I'm gonna, I kind of have forgotten like my tips and tricks for like recognizing the stitches, remembering what to do, this is where you could kind of mess up, this is the, like the error, the problem areas in any sort of tutorial. So I thought I better just make a little swatch and get those stitches back, like practice doing it. So when I'm doing, I'm filming the tutorial, I don't have to like really think about if I'm telling you everything. So it's like, oh no, I just did this. Like, yes, like a fresh pattern in my mind. So this coming out, I thought I would start Are you seeing it? Oh, I think it's Cakes Cotton Royale. It's one of these gorgeous yarns from my latest Ice Yarn unboxing. Fantastic. It's like a DK weight cotton. I've used two cakes so far. So I'm on a two cake. Um, well, this is how much you get for two cakes. I'm going to make a wrap. And I'm so excited about it. My problem with wraps, I'm loving on it, like I'm loving on it. My problem with wraps, when I'm crocheting them, like when I'm, when I'm starting them out, and I don't know how you feel about starting projects, but just starting the project, getting the stitch count right, does it stress you out? For me, I don't think I'm stressed out, but I also don't have the TV on. I don't have the kids home. Like they're either totally busy, like I can't, I don't, I'm not being bothered by anybody, including, any source of entertainment like I'm literally counting and figuring it out and doing the math and doing the stitch count and trying to get the ends the way I want them to be and trying to get it long enough I want it long enough to be a functional item even if it's a blanket a wrap a scarf I want it long enough but not too long where I'm wasting my stitches do you know what I mean so if it's even like six stitches too short or too long I will go back after the first row I'll frog everything back and start again to either add or take away those six stitches. For this one, I was finishing, I didn't even, and I don't count how many stitches it is across because I think it's kind of, it can be depressing to me. <laughs> to be like, oh my gosh, I have so many stitches left to do. Not really, you're gonna be fine. Um, so I just put in stitch markers every 12 stitches and then if I need another handful of stitch markers. So I will count those out for this tutorial when I film this tutorial. But for now, there's just a lot of stitch markers on here and I went back and added six more stitch markers. So six times 12, I went back and added that much. I wanted it to be long enough. I didn't want it to be one of those wraps where you have to add a border to get it to be long enough. I wanted it just to start long enough. And what I use for an example of what is long enough is either the Sunday Granny wrap or the Webaween shawl. So the Webaween is perfect length. That's the first um, shawl I made that is like totally appropriate. Very, very long. Like I think it's, I wouldn't, I didn't mean it for it to be that long, <laughs> but it turned out that long. And now I measure everything against the Webaween if it is long enough. So this was not long enough. It was not matching the Webaween. So I went back and added a lot of stitches. I don't know what six times 12 is right now on my head, but it's a lot. So I don't have my phone here either, random. So that is, I really should have learned my multiplication tables. Kids, if you're watching, memorize your multiplication tables in grade five, it is important. So I added a lot of stitches to it and it is just right. Plus you would not believe the squish. You would not believe it. It is so, it feels like knitting, like knit. Can you see how like papery thin it is? It is so thin and so squishy. 
It's dreamy. I'm using a four and a half millimeter hook for that one. I didn't want it to be, I didn't, I, I didn't want the stitches to lose their shape. I would have used a five. I started with a four and a half. I thought the four and a half was just fine. So I didn't even bother trying the five. Probably could have done a five, but I'm happy with the four and a half and four and a half or five, same difference ish. Probably not. There is a difference, but I'm loving on it. So that is my, I'm watching TV and I'm like, do, 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 working on that fabulous wrap. So that will be a tutorial coming out too. First is going to be the blanket because I'm still working on that shawl. I have uh, six cakes all together. I was going to leave one cake for a border on the two ends, but I don't think I'm going to do like a crazy border, but then I don't know, but I don't think it needs a crazy border. But I, anyway, I have four more cakes to put onto it and each cake gives me four and a half inches. So it's going to be just the most amazing and perfect wrap. If you want to get the yarn for that, I'll link it down below. You will need two packs to make the same one as I am making. And they have a whole bunch of colors. Hopefully it's still in stock. It's amazing. But if you don't have, or you don't want to get that yarn, any DK weight yarn will be fine. Anything you, could, you would use a four and a half millimeter crochet hook. Love it. I can't wait to, that's what I want to do. I'm like, I gotta go. I gotta crochet on it. So I'm super excited. And with that excitement, I just want to share a little bit about the upload schedule. I always say there's a new video on Wednesdays and Sundays. And then I also said, I'm not going to be putting up as many videos, but then I also say Wednesdays and, Wednesdays and Sundays. So what I'm making myself do, which is hard for me, because I feel like there's so many things I want to share with you, like today, like right away. But then the editing and the filming, it, it gets like overwhelming. And well, that's how life is. So there's going to be a new video every Sunday for sure. And usually a smaller video on the Wednesdays. Plus there's also reels and shorts and all that stuff. And if you want to see more throughout the week, pop on over to Instagram or the shorts here on YouTube. I'll be putting up shorts here as well. So there will always be content from me, but it will not be like a full on podcast, a full on tutorial with written pattern. It will be something that we are sharing together and having fun, but there will definitely be a proper video every Sundays and usually another video on Wednesdays, but I'm not saying that like out loud, like I'm not holding myself to it. If there's not a video on Wednesdays, that's okay. It's all right. There's a video every week for sure. There'll be more, but I'm releasing myself from the Wednesday must have regime. I'm going into coasting. Speaking of regime, how is, I think that's what it's, is that what it's called? Is who's watching anything great on Netflix or TV or the box or whatever you, whatever device you use to watch shows is anything good you're watching. I watched coma. Just, I didn't even really mean to watch it. I just saw it, the thumbnail for like days and days. And I was like, let me just put it on. I think I was crocheting. What was I crocheting? I was making baskets, Easter baskets. So I was just needed something to like get me there to get the baskets done. And I didn't even bother not watching it. Like I just kept watching it. It was super watchable. The plot twists were great. So that was surprisingly quite enjoyable. Great to crochet to very enjoyable show. So it would let me know what you're watching in the comments and have a super great day. I'm waiting for you in that video right there. Stay hooked.